this is uh, the study for the Wilson, forgive me, Will Clayton Church of Christ. Uh, 2019 is our year, and it's January the 2nd. And this is our midweek Wednesday Bible study. And we're still dealing with the area of the kings of Israel and Judah with specific lessons each time. And what we're dealing with now is the enemies of Judah arise against David. The enemies of Judah arise against David. And we're going to 2 Samuel. We're going to deal with uh, chapter number 20. 2 Samuel chapter 20. And we are just about done uh, with Samuel. We'll be picking up when we're complete uh, with this particular Bible. And we will go into uh, the books of Kings and Chronicles at different points to speak of the other kings uh, that uh, are not uh, David and Saul as we have been dealing with to this point. There's so much written about Saul and David that it consumes uh, First and Second Samuel because uh, Saul being the first king and David uh, himself uh, being uh, the great king that comes after him of whom all those of uh, Judah are uh, patterned after from that day forward. And so uh, those that desire to be righteous kings, that is. And so I want to look at some points here in this particular study. The enemies of Judah rise against David. There are several enemies. The sons of Bilal, uh, they become untrustworthy, which shows they rose against him by dissension and turning their backs against him. So one of the points I want to point out, a son of Bilal is untrustworthy. I also want to point out those who support righteousness will always turn in the wicked. Uh, they will always expose uh, those who are wicked. And so now, if you will, let's look at uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 20 uh, and, ber and verse number 1. And there happened to be that a man of Bilal, whose name was Sheba, the son of Betri, a Benjamite, and he blew a trumpet and said, we have no part in David. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. And this, if you remember when we studied last time from uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 19, it ended on a sour note, uh, if you remember. And what happened was there was a great dissension and, uh, between Israel and Judah. And uh, the words of Judah were more fierce uh, than the words of Israel. And so therefore, this son of Bilal, uh, which is a believer who is in the kingdom of God, as we have today in the church of Christ, and they uh, are of the devil, though, but they do fight in the battles. Uh, they do want to be a part of the church, but for other benefits other than what the Lord has said, they may drink a little, get high a little here and there. They may run women or men. They may dabble into the homosexual atmosphere, uh, yet they will be at church. Sometimes they'll leave straight from the club and come to church, not with the intention of changing, just to show up for blessings and things of that nature. Sometimes they'll be thieves, just a whole array of things. They get real rowdy when the saints are too benevolent as far as helping even the saints of God out. They get rowdy about these things because they're not of God. So 2 Samuel 2, uh, 2 Samuel 20 and 2 says, So every man of Israel went up from after David. So they listened to this guy. God just rises up. But remember, he's of Benjamin. And let's not forget, Saul's house is of Benjamin. And there's always a link here. It's kind of like Christian or believing cousins. Uh, they, they have trouble in letting go that they were counted not worthy to be a part of this great uh, system. And if you remember, the tribe of Benjamin is actually connected to Judah throughout the whole duration because of the thrashing that happened uh, when the Benjamites were evil like Sodom and Gomorrah. They be 
dabbled in the homosexuality. And when their brethren found out the nastiness and the violence that was of them, uh, as we know, uh, dealing with the, <coughs> excuse me, Levite, uh, as he rose up and severed his woman's body into pieces and sent a piece unto every uh, nation of Israel. And they began the war against Benjamin and they de defeated them so bad that they almost wiped out the whole nation of Benjamin. And so therefore, one of the wiser men cried out, do not kill all the Benjamites. I remember Brother Anthony Clark uh, exposed that lesson to us many years ago. And so Benjamin is supposed to really be right there with Judah. But you have this son of Bilal, remember, he is of the devil, but he hangs around the kingdom. So what he does is he rises up and he causes a group to depart from following David. And so now you see the word Israel invoked. He shouldn't even be involved with those 10 tribes like that, but he does. And he's persuading them, let's leave David. So verse 2 says, and followed Sheba, the son of Betri. But the men of Judah claim unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. And the king took the 10 women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. So he would not deal with them. And if you remember that uh, some of these women are, are the ones who are, uh, remember there was a group left behind who uh, Solomon rises up. He starts to, uh, intermingle to know them to sleep with them as his own wives and so therefore you know uh, David does not hold this women accountable but he does not go in unto them again he does not re have a relationship with them as far as he does with his other women and they are living in a widowhood as if David had died because they can't have anyone else then said the king to Amasa assemble me the men of Judah within three days and be thou here present so Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had upon him. So David gives him so many days, weeks, months, or what have you, and says, okay, I want you to get the men together. And he takes too long, so there's, a, there's something fishy going on. Because he's supposed to have the thing done in a certain time. And David said to Abishai, now shall Sheba, the son of Betri, do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servants and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. Uh, see, now what's happened is Amasa has not uh, done what he's supposed to. He sided with this guy, and they're going to take care of him. And what's happened is, is that the individual uh, has now fortified Sheba with strength because he's supposed to get a group together and they're supposed to be trying to fight this guy. So they said, we got to get him before he get his city fenced up. Once he gets the city fenced up, he said, well, how can he build a fence? They could, I can build a fortune because it takes a while for you to try where these people are at. And so he got time to build up. Now it's hard to battle. Now you got fenced in the area. That's why Israel kept fence up. That's why we have a fence, spiritual fence, uh, which is the word of God that prevents anyone from coming in. But somebody opened that fence and let Alexander Calvin bought and stone in years ago uh, and, and actually planted the tares there, uh, allowing the devil to come in and plant tares. And we have a lot of confusion within the kingdom as it always has been since the beginning of time. So verse 7. And that went out after him Joab's men and the Cherethites and the Pelethites and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Betri. When they were at the great stone, which is Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And Joab's garment that he had put on was girded about him. And upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheet thereof. And as he went forth, it fell out. And so 
what he has is he has he has his weapon here and as he goes forth his weapon uh the weapon falls out so he you see he's he's got a goal in mind verse 9 and joab said to amasa a thou and help my brothers and Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him down with in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again. And he died. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the son of Beatrice. See, Amasa is not out of his business right. Uh... He's allowed this man to build up a fortress. So David and him are saying, you know, man, you know, you're like an enemy to us. So jo Joab and them, Joab and his group are rowdy, rowdy, bowdy, bowdy, <laughs> sons of Belial also. And see, they're, 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 they're like Sheba, but they're on David's side. That's what's the matter. That's why we start out one of the points is the son of Belial is untrustworthy. So what happens is he's got that sword, he's got a sheep, falls out, so he grabs it, but Amasa is not paying attention. So he goes up to greet him, how you doing my brother, you know, and grab his beard and then he shakes him in his fifth rib and that's it. One time he drops and they leave him now because this is how Joab handles business. If you don't do what David said, he puts you to bed early in life, you go to sleep quick. And so therefore we have to understand, saying is that, uh, there are people that will get excited and will attack individuals who are not taking care of the Lord's work properly because they know that this thing is allowing an enemy to gain strength. Uh, Joab being a son of Bilal still, he is very loyal to a certain degree to David. And this is what you have. And this is why we're teaching that these are, uh, you know, saints, uh, I'm not the only one to taught this. Brother Hamilton has uh, taught us, as we said, when we first started this at the beginning of the year, that he taught us about all the different kings, span how they inner work with prophets. We, you know, years ago, we have those things archived. And we have to understand, you should not be, be unable to make decisions in life. But all this type of teaching, you should know, you should put yourself, am I Sheba or am I Joab? Either way, you're bad in that category. But the key is, is you have both these individuals in the church and you have a guy that knows, okay, well, he'll be very loyal to one of the leaders, very loyal to one of the leaders. And, and, and but he's a son of Bilal. He's not really in it to love God. He's doing the actions. He carries out certain laws of he does things, but he doesn't love God. That's like the church in Ephesus became uh, in Revelation 2. I'm doing it, but I don't love God. I got purpose here. I don't want him putting me in hell. You got that type person too. And this guy is Raleigh. So he says, Amasa, you the reason why we got drama catching, trying to catch Sheba. So I'm going to take you to bed and you're out, meaning I'm going to kill you. And so therefore, they took out after Sheba, the son of Beatrice. In verse 11, one of Joab's men stood by him and said, he that favored Joab, and he that is for David, let him go out to Joab. So, you know, Joab and them took off, and so you got a guy standing by him, you know, he's he's hyped up too. This guy is bleeding. Amasa is in a pool of blood right now, which we're going to read about. And this guy said, you know, who's with Joab? Who's with David? Let's go. So he said, y'all yeah, not going by yourself. We're coming with you. We're going we're gonna to get this guy. And But when you hear these things, you hear sometimes cries of amen, Cry loud, watchman. God is with the mighty. But this guy may not be in the right position with God. And you have to watch because sometimes he, he'll go up and he'll blow out another person who is dragging their feet, maybe doing a lot of work. He'll blow them out the wall. Like he guts this guy. He'll gut him like that. You know, he's not fixing. Go ask uh, the person that this person truly loves. Oh, what should I do? He's going to take care of himself. So you have all this drama. And this is what happened to Abner. Joab snuffs him out because he killed his brother. And you have a lot of drama going on. You have the same thing in the church. And you should be able to see. Sometimes you'll see a person. You go like, this guy's like Abner. You look at a person. Uh, yeah, he's like uh, Joab. You know, you, you have to just be real. Somebody going to look like somebody. And you have to understand. And, and with these techniques shown, you will not have them. 
So he says in verse uh, uh, 12, And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. He in the middle of the highway. He in the middle of the highway, like I-10 or something. And he is wallowing in his blood. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field and cast a cart upon him. And when he saw that everyone that came by him stood still, it says, when he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after joy out to pursue after Sheba, the son of Beatrice. So listen, this guy's like, you know, the man just say, let's go. And other, and you know, you see a guy get gutted like that, and they don't know what's happening. Joy out is body, body, just guts the guy. The guy's in the blood, and people come by, and he's just looking, he stands still. Man, that's a monster, man. You know, and so he said, look, drag him out the way, throw a sheet over him. Let's go. And they can go by. What is that saying? Listen, when you see these attacks in the kingdom, I've seen brethren attack like this, not physically. I've seen brethren come out of meeting in very large churches of Christ. I've been a part of them. And they come out and they're arguing out of the meeting. This is your fault. Now all the people get excited. And their brother-in-laws too, their relatives, in addition to being members of the church. Like, uh, no, I didn't do anything. You want to run the church? I mean, I've seen it. I'm sitting there, man. I've been in the church all my six, seven years, and I'm looking like, but I know what's going on. I was in the meeting. But I'm looking around like, now the other members don't know why these guys are arguing. It's like it's like an amasa grabbing by the beard and gutting. And people will just kind of stand flat-footed. If you've never seen it. Keep living. You'll see it maybe. But just stand flat foot. Somebody has to drag the situation out the way. Come up to the front. All right, brethren. These types of things happen. Let's not get shook up. It'll get worked out. And I remember the first time I had to do something like that. <laughs> you, you're like, man, this thing is wow. But you know, God is with you and you speak peace. And the people... They literally calm down just like they move far when the bloody body's out the way. It's just that you're like, man, that's a monster. He's, he, this guy's whipping around in his blood. He's whipping. He's back and forth. It's not normal stuff. You know, this guy that got blasted, maybe over in the corner crying, I'm just trying to do the Lord. We got people looking at this guy, man. Let's go. You got to calm the situation down and say, okay, listen, brethren, we all love each other. Families have feuds. It's the way it is, you know. Let's lift each other up. Let's move forward. God is still with us. And you be thinking, nobody going to listen to me. They will. The Lord doesn't have a, like, totem pole of, okay, person six, drop the ball, get me person five. Now the Lord will go all the way to the very newest person. Say, okay, hey, why don't you say something to encourage them and just to prick the heart. Say something to calm them down. Because the Lord uses who he wants to. Okay, nobody even mentions this guy's name. This guy, this, his name is a man. He drags him back out the way, comes in with a sheet, there's a certain degree of respect there, and they go. And this is what you have to understand. Why? Because you got to go get Sheba, which represents the devil, and you got to go whoop him because he has messed up the whole kingdom. He's got to divide it. And that's where we're at. And so he says, uh, verse 14, and he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Bet Meacha and all the Berites and they were gathered together and went also after him and they came and besieged him in Abel of Bet Meacha and they cast up a bank against the city and it stood in the trench and all the people that were with Joab battled the wall to throw it down so now they're hitting on the wall and throw it down the saints I want to take a moment here. You know how much rich, juicy, beefy teaching is in the Old Testament? You can't even think about how much. But a lot of brethren <laughs> just can't live in the New Testament, brethren. That's other things that are taught only in the Old Testament. And you have to have a lot of everyday life stuff taught. And you'll find just goo gobs of it in the Old Testament. But you have to understand why is the Lord's Spirit mentioning all these sidebars to show you this is a real life. Like you're going down the street, say, he went down the street and he passed the Ramada in him. 
of which so and so owned. And he, and he went over here and he, he bypassed the ditch that was well, bogged down all chairs. It's telling you, it was a real world, man. It's real. This isn't a figment. This isn't a movie. It's real. And that's why you see all the things mentioned. So they start beating on the wall and say, okay, we, he, he's in this wall. Because this, this city has a wall. That's some neighborhoods that have walls. They have iron gates that open. And a guard with a pistol that will shoot you. If you don't stop at the stop sign and let everybody know who you are. And you'd have to get in there. You know he's in there. You'd have to hit that wall. So everybody's hitting that wall trying to knock it down. Then cried a wise woman. Notice the word. Out of the city. Hear, hear. Say I pray you unto Joel. Come near hither that I may speak with thee. Okay, and when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? He answered, I am he. Then said she unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. You see this a lot. Why do you see this? She let him know, man, I'm just a servant to you. You know, she don't go, listen to me, son. No, wrong guy. He will gut you. Yes, he will. You don't need a beard. They grab you by your hair. He's going to take you out. So she identifies, I'm humble. A lesson here to take note of. Let us make sure if we, someone's attacking in attack mode, angry, present ourselves properly to them. You know, you know. Hey, man, you know how you, you know, I just want to. I just want to try to serve you, man, anyway I can. What, what's what's going on? You know, that's what she identified, and he answered, "I do hear." Then she spake, saying, "They were want to speak in old times, saying, they shall surely ask counsel at Abel." And so they ended the matter. It says, I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would thou swallow up the inheritance of the law? So she presents, she says, I'm a mother. You know, I mean, that's a city. It's like, man, this is a city here, a motherly place. It's peace here, man. Where well, are you going to kill us? What will you accomplish destroying us? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. As Brother Hamilton said one time ago, I, I, I forget the lesson. I, I remember each of you that have spoken, God knows I've gleaned something that stands fast. I do all my energy to do it. I remember he, he taught about Caiaphas and other guys like that. They're not all evil. There are certain things they won't do. That was a king that was evil and he killed up some people, but he realized, okay, don't kill the children because the children should not die for the father. They, they hold on to some of the Bible. They'll tell the majority of it out and burn it, but they'll hold, okay, this is what we're going to keep. So this, this person, Joab, says, okay, no, I'm not trying to destroy. I, I'm here for a battle, our brother Al. And that's what he's identifying to the lady. I'm here for a battle. Go ahead, my brother. Now, you bring up an excellent point. Uh, you were talking about earlier about, like, this is real life. Right. You know what I mean? So they're giving you all these accounts. And, like, when you, when you, when you read, and it's really important that you understand you approach the scriptures that way. Because in, in, in life, you'll meet people that are nice to you mm -hmm. or they, they may be they may handle themselves in a respectable way in whatever way that you're dealing with, with them in. You see what I'm saying? Right. But they still not altogether right in the sight of God. And you have to, and you have to be able to understand how to deal with that person, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like like Joab is a son of Bilal. Like you see what I'm saying? But he's David's right hand man. Like he ran with David his whole life. Like, I mean. And he's like, man, what do I have to do with you? You know, whatever. You know, he vexed David with some of the stuff that he did. But like, right. Joab was with David for his whole life. That's right. You know what I mean? He lived past David, matter of fact. And so, mm. and then he died after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but, but we just talking about the course of a life. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You come in contact with people and you may deal with that person because you can deal with them in this facet of life, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But you still have to understand in your mind what examples to follow yes. that lead to heaven. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes, amen. Like everybody that you deal with is not going to be heaven bound. That's right. But you may deal with them in a, in a productive way on this earth. You know what I mean? Amen. And so, but you have to be able to make the make the differentiation between what road leads to heaven right. and what road leads to success on earth. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Excellent. Like yeah. like example, you may have coworkers that they respect you. Mm -hmm. They don't cuss around you, right. or they you know they are honest people. You can trust them to get a job done. Like y'all work together you know that he gonna pull his weight and he gonna do a good job that's right and you gonna do y'all can y'all get stuff y'all work well together as far as being productive on this job whatever and you may respect him he got his kids he got a wife you know what i mean like he a nice guy y'all may like some of the same stuff and like 
same hobbies. That's Y'all may get along. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so you said, man, he cool people. He may not necessarily be interested about the gospel. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he said, but I respect God. You know, I know God. I know God's real. Mm-hmm. I preach. I, I think I pray every day. I thank him for what he gives me. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, like, you may say, but he may be, a, like I said, as far as work with him on the earth, it, it's a good combination. Y'all work well together, blah, blah, blah. Right. But you have to also know that, like, the the way the road that he walks is not the road that leads to heaven, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And but 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 that's why stories like this are so important, right. and because you understand, like you have to know how to identify people. Even with all the stuff that Joab did, like okay, David went to heaven or is, or is pegged for heaven. You see what I'm saying? Right. But David ran with Joab his whole life. Mm-hmm. Joab is not going to heaven right. based on his life and what he did and all the stuff that you know the accounts that are given of him. That's right. He's 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 a productive guy as far as in war, and he's loyal to David, mm-hmm. and he helped David in a lot of different things. Matter of fact, when David was tripping by Absalom, it was Joab that told him, "Hey man, listen, man, you can go out here and with your face all down after these people risk their life for you, man. You better get yourself together because mm-hmm. they gonna come, they gonna handle their business on you." Right. That's wise counsel. That's and right. David took you like yeah, he swiped his face and went out there and talked to the people. That's right. But like, but Joab's example is not one that leads to heaven, though. And you you have to be able to identify and understand that. You you gonna live with people. You gonna as as the scriptures say, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. That's right. You know what I mean, you gonna be in the world. You are gonna deal with people all the time, and everybody in the world is not gonna present themselves as just like I am Satan's son, number mm-hmm. one son. Like you know, he is my God, and I am his. You know what I mean? Like right. some people are gonna be decent people to like deal with, right. but they're not gonna go to heaven though. That's right. And so you have to understand understand the lines as far as you know what I mean? Understand the boundaries and the lines and the way that lead it to eternal life. That's right. And that's where we walk. You know what I mean? Just because you may chit chat with somebody and work with somebody from this time to that time, or you may have a friend that you may be our friends, but, and they are trustworthy in the sense of if I leave a house, if I tell him he watch my house, he gonna watch my house. He may be sure right now and break into my stuff. Right. Like if, if I drop some money on the ground, he'll pick it up and give it back to me. He mm-hmm. wouldn't steal, he wouldn't rob me. Mm-hmm. If he saw my kid on the side of the road, he'll stop and go pick, kick my kid up. Mm-hmm. If he saw my kid doing something bad, he'll stop and tell my kid, your daddy know, you know your daddy didn't raise you like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if my wife was someone, he wouldn't be trying to hit on my wife. He'll help my wife with her groceries and be like, cool, I can trust him mm-hmm. with that. But I can't trust him to lead me to heaven, though. Right. You see what I'm saying? I can't trust him in spiritual things because he's not, that's not what he is. That's right. But in things of the earth, as far as everything but because and i'm done because this life is a vapor and like as solomon taught us like i mean all of us live the same lives under the sun in a sense of as far as physicality same thing happened to the righteous man to the unrighteous man in the sense of we all die we all got trouble like you're gonna work you're gonna labor you're gonna have vanity vanity and all this stuff that we're doing Mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day you got everybody gonna give an account that's all you have to keep in mind right you know so you working with people and y'all living you know in this on this earth together you're gonna deal with people but, like I said, you have to always keep in mind, like, where you're going. Right. And where they're going. That's right. And what the extent of y'all relationship is. That's you right. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's okay to be cool with somebody, y'all get along, whatever. But just know that y'all will part ways of the judgment. That's and right. that's just what it is. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Well said, Brother Ham. God bless you. And, you know, well, this, that was good, brother. Thank you. Because... You have to wonder about all of Masa, you know. He the, it says he didn't return at the right time. How does he defect the sheep? Because he, he isn't doing what he's supposed to. They catch up to him. He's I don't know what the dude was doing. But Joab is one of no words. You know, he's not gonna do like David run up there, you know, for Masa, whatever. But David knows he messed us up, man. He didn't get he we went him come back. Sheba the Gonna, by the time we catch them, he's building cities, he's going to get away. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do in the large church, or you defect and say, well, you know, you don't know if he was discouraged. I don't want to get involved. I'm scared of Sheba. We don't know. We know one thing. He won't be able to talk about it at that point when Joab comes because he's dead. He kills him. And, and we have to understand is they're taking this thing serious. God takes this serious. You got to go get this guy. He's the devil. He is of the devil. You got to catch him. And he's, he's split the whole kingdom up with one statement. And people, for some reason, follow him. And so, this is how things happen. And so, Brother Hammond said, you know, you got no idea. Joe Albert, Brother Hammond said, David 
on his way out on his dying bed is going to mark Joab as to be killed along with Shimei. You would say, well, he served, brother, I would say, sir, my life, he did. But he wasn't the one who loved God. So therefore, his allegiance to David isn't from his heart because he was like, listen to what David is saying. You know, you got to listen to what David said. I mean, you can't make no payback on your brother. You can't do these things. And, and he, he challenges David at certain points because David gets a little weak knee behind Absalom's death. And so, but this is the problem, saying You have to understand, you can be in the kingdom and doing a certain thing, but if you enjoy out, you're not going to make it to heaven. And people won't be able to see him. He's one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest men I knew. Yeah, yeah. But he's he, he's not. Yeah, he's not the person you are. And this is what you gotta watch with the joy out of life. And so he says. Uh, he points out that. Uh, Joab breaks it down to the lady and she, he says, the matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Beatry, by name, had lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said to Joab, behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Now, this woman is serious about living. So she's now, now I, I don't know what's in her mind on how she's gonna get it done, but she's gonna get it done. Verse 22. Then, yeah, <laughs> then a woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Beatrice, and cast it out to joy out. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now, Joab was over all the host of Israel. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites. And Adoram was over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. And Shiva was scribe. And Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira also, the Jerite, was a chief ruler by David. At this point, you stop and recognize, as we said, our second point, the righteous will always support God. And so this woman said, you know, man, yeah, we're going to cut his head off and throw it over the wall. You don't have to come in the city. It's going to be done. And they look at his face. No, okay, it's she. We know what he looked like. Here, brother. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, brother. Yes. As a, that's an example, you know, concerning just in the kingdom of God, how the spirit of God works. You know, it reminds me of uh, Sisera in jail, Amen. how, how yeah. jail gave him some milk when he asked for water. Yes. And how this sister, after he slept, uh, he thought he had a place to hide, but she nailed and fastened his head to the ground. Yes, and also yes. uh, Abimelech, where Abimelech tried to hit the wall, where a woman cast a stone from the from the ceiling, I mean from the from the tower on top yes. of the the wall, Amen. and it hit him on the head, and so he was embarrassed, and he yes. told his armor bearer to uh, to hurry up and kill him because he was embarrassed to be killed by a woman. <laughs> uh, but these just Amen. these three examples are examples of where women can. Uh, rule with the Holy Spirit in the church, yeah. not as leadership, uh, but concerning doing God's will and commandment, right. executing, getting rid of the wicked or the sin. And this is just one example of a uh, sister in the kingdom, you know, Amen. doing God's work. Amen. Well said, How? Yeah. You know, there's some tough women, man. That's three tough women of which you don't want to run into on the wrong side of, the, of God's kingdom because they will put you to sleep. I mean, each of them, praise God for them. Yeah, just to kind of piggybacking on how, yeah, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that's why wisdom is so important. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and because wisdom brings forth influence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, she had enough influence to be able to go into the city and tell these people, hey, listen, this is going on. We need to kill this man. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, cool. They kill this man, throw his head over the wall. You know what I mean? <laughs> and because there's a, there, you know what I mean? Like, she may not have been the 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 head of the city mm -hmm. you know what i mean or That's like right. the you know whatever the governor or whatever title you know that, that city or town or whatever it had mm -hmm. but like she had enough wisdom and people had enough respect for her word That's right. that mm -hmm. she it was able to get it done get whatever needed to get done That's you know right. what i'm saying she and she told him before she had even talked to the people listen this is what we're gonna do yeah and so she already knew the, the influence that she had because of the wisdom because that's what the bible says she's a, a wise woman that's right. and so Women in the kingdom, like I said, the point that he was making, like women in the kingdom, you may, you don't have to, people get all bent out of shape because, oh, I can't be a preacher. I can't be an elder. I can't be a deacon. I can't be nothing. Right. But 
right, but righteousness brings forth influence. Amen. And and influence in righteousness. That's right. And I want to like stress that because like so you have like and we've known women in the kingdom in our congregation that are oh, that are wise That's and right. people listen to them. That's right. You mean so you just have to make sure you use that wisdom, use that influence for good, for righteousness' sake. You see what I'm saying? Like, just you don't have to have office in order to have influence. Amen. You don't have to have office in order to 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 lead people in what is good. That's right. I say if you if you if you are wise in righteousness, and people and those who <laughs> seek after righteousness are going to take heed to your words. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now you have a responsibility to make sure that when you speak that it's right. Mm -hmm. You That's know what I right. mean? Amen. But like, like I said, but like, like at the end of the day, it's not about office so okay. much as it is about influence. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. And like, if your intention, your heart is good, you, you, all you want to do is make sure that whether you have office or not, that you use your influence to lead people in the right direction, to lead that's them, right. as I say, toward the path of eternal life. I mean, that's that's, right. that's always the objective. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And so, whether male or female, or whatever, you, you you always make sure that you use the influence that God has blessed you, or the, as the Bible puts it, favor. You God you, you use the favor that God bless you with in order to like propel people to do what's right. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man. You know what I mean, because that at the end of the day, that's what is that's what matters you see what i'm saying that's right like title title has a way of vaunting if, if you're if you're not right it, it, people seek yeah yeah it, it's they seek title as a as a vainglory mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying right. and like so you you hear people talk about well you know and i'm just saying like the mentality i can't be you know women you know they the women are restricted but there is no restriction in influence that's you see right. what i'm saying if they like there is no oh well, she a woman so you don't you know what I mean now you have if if if, if the sister if 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 you are if you have an example of right and I I I, I say I give you an example and I'm done you have widows right. in the scriptures they've lived their life in a way to where people know them that's right and when they get a certain age and they don't have nobody to take care of the church takes care of them until that's they right. die Amen. you see what I'm saying right. like like. But but the church has to know her work. They have to know her. That's right. Like just like just like you have to know a brother that's gonna be an elder or a deacon. They have to, have to work among you in order to know him, in order for him to be able to qualify to have this office. For a widow to be taken in into the number of the church, they have to know her. That's right. You know, what I'm they have to know her work. She has to have worked before them. Amen. And like and I'm not saying that like I'm saying and I'm saying it to say that people they will they're gonna know her. Right. They gonna and they're gonna respect her. That's right. Because of the life that she's lived. Amen. And when she speaks, people gonna listen. That's right. Because of the life that she's lived. That's, that's right. what that's that's the that's the that is the uh honor that's due her. You know what I mean? And like that's the love that's extended toward her. Now if a person a woman is fifty and she got her husband died, she don't get taken into the number. Right. You know what that's I mean? That's exactly but right. But a woman at, at, at that age that, that meet those qualifications, the the church is it is obligated and God is saying she won't be honored in that way. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So like it's but it's because of the way that you've lived your life that's right. that you will you you this honor is due you. You that's see what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So it's not like and it should never be, man, we gotta take care of this woman. <laughs> she you know what I mean? Like yeah, right. if yeah. if you know that this sister has dedicated her life to righteousness and she mm -hmm. finds us in this in this state where she ain't got nobody else to help her, mm -hmm. then we should be happy to say we're going to help the sister because of who she is exactly. and what she's done her whole life. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And so it's like, or, or, or since we've known her, the example that she set before us, we happy to help the sister and, and we're going to make sure she's taken care of. Amen. You know what I mean? Sure. That that's And like I said, so you know, a woman like that is going to have influence because of the way that she's lived her life. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, like office is whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's an honor in the sense of serving God, but that comes from a righteous heart. Right. If you have a righteous heart, then you're going to have influence. And you just make sure that you use that influence in righteousness. God bless you, brother. Well said. God bless you all for comments. Uh, this has uh, enhanced and shined a light on our lesson and has given it uh, stability and has given it pillows that it can sit on. So God bless you all. Uh, we understand this and see the blessing uh, of everyday life of people. We see the battle and aggressiveness but a lot of us don't realize there's still areas many on the earth 
while people still get their head cut off and rolled off of, of uh, places. You know, that's just the way it is. So all of this isn't like that's how life was then. That's still many places like that today. In America, too, you go in the wrong area, you know, or do the wrong thing. So, you know, we have enlightenment here on what it is we should do. And having understood that we don't want to be the son of the law, we don't want to be a Joab that, you know, becomes uh, <clears throat> in a state of kind of a loose cannon. Uh, we want to be balanced. Uh, we want to be the woman who will have the wisdom to tell the person, we got to get rid of this guy. He's destroying the city. And we got to be a church that will honor them as Brother Hamlin as well taught to take care of them, uh, those that be widows indeed, because you have some people that just, they're not going to take care of their mother or their grandmother. You know, it's not going to do it. They're going to do their thing. And that's what it is. So the church uh, has to step forward. And God will have something to say at the judgment uh, if we fail to do that. And so with that thought in mind, let's remember that if you hear the word of God, you should want to be a part of a kingdom like this that you see listed in a uh, physical example in the Old Testament and see today in the spiritual what do you have to do? Well, you're right. You were baptized, but you're wrong. Your sins were not removed, as they found out in Acts 19, 1 through 5, if you're not a member of the church of Christ. And you have to accept in your heart that these men thought they were just as saved as you do. And Paul explains to them with a question or two, you have no concept of salvation. You don't even know how to receive the Holy Spirit. You don't even know if you, hey, we are not supposed to hurt about that being the Holy Ghost. Man, you are way out in that field. And so therefore, when he teaches them the truth, they are baptized. And had they delayed and wanted to have more teaching, there's writings and acts about that. And they would come back for more. But anybody that walks away and shuns it and uh, pokes the lip out and snarls, that person is eternally lost because God's not going to honor only thing past what he said. So what do you do in your case? You're right. Jesus did die. He buried the third day. He rose again. How do you make that come to a value in your life? Is Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized, Mark 16 and 16, shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. If you accept that, then you will recognize what Peter did on the day of Pentecost. Peter's talking to the holiest of holy people on the earth. And he tells them, all your souls are lost. And when they hear the messages because they did not believe who the Christ was, and some are directly influential in his destruction of his flesh, they say, men and brother, what shall we do? Then he says in verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, repent and be baptized. It's a tragedy and a shame that the denomination of the world as being sheep of the son of Beatrice can lie and rise up and say, let us leave David, let us leave the Lord's people and walk away and start our own thing. And they will rise up and say, prayer and all manner of nonsense, the baptism of our son of grace. But Peter has the key to the kingdom and the key is the words he used. And he says clearly, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, which is to be placed in his character and his authority. And by that being done, you receive remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he says those things. And then he says, for the promise unto you and to your children and all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call them. In other words, they testify and encourage them, save yourself and this unto our generation. Then they that God receives his word were baptized the same day and 3,000 souls were saved. So what are they added? These are added to the church. Acts 2, 5, 7. And the Lord adds to the church daily church to be saved. So the saving is when you're added and all done in baptism. And they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, which is what we use today. The fellowship is the walk in the light as Christ in the light. The break on bread, which is the meal he said to do just to remember him till he come again. And prayers while we make supplications for ourselves and others. If we believe that, then we can understand clearly why the eunuch, being excited as he was, is not getting the same excitement from Philip. When he sees the water, he says, see what the enemy be baptized is water. Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Because I believe Jesus Christ, the son of God, the chariot stops. Then he baptizes and now the rejoicing begins. And so Paul explains why 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, with a Jew or Gentile, with a bond of free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. We believe that and understand it. This action, all these disciples, 
different times they said this. All these great men, the apostles, all agreed to the same thing. That baptism is the final step, and that's how you get in. Without that one, you have done nothing. And so Peter explains as he sums it up, 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the like figure went out to even baptism is also now. That just wipes the thief on the cross out of the equation. Now save us. Not the putting away of the field of the flesh. The explanation is in the text what it does. But the answer, uh, and this is the key, that word is so beautiful. To inquire, to look into, you're looking into this way to respond to God. The answer of a good conscience, your spirit has done right. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is in heaven at the right hand of God, angels, thorns, and powers are being made subject on them. If you believe that, God has the opportunity to rescue you. If you're here now, you're listening to this message, you can hit the little triangle. It will give you different information, uh, access to numbers whereby you can call and continue to study or request to be baptized no matter what land you live in. And if you're here, though, and you have heard the truth, remember the other part, Revelation 2.10. He says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. But the key word is, you have tribulation 10 days. So it's going to be complete. The hope is, be thou faithful unto death. And we get baptized sometimes, just not faith. You got to be faithful. Faithful to the law, faithful in the faithful in the obedience of what the Lord has said when you're by yourself and no one else is around. If we do that, there's no way we can go to hell. It's impossible. If it is done with love, it is in the heart. As Brother Hamlin said, you don't want to serve the widow and go, oh, man, we got to serve her all till she dies. That's not from the heart. Even though you do it, you may be bringing her bread and she'll hug you, but you're not making it in heaven because you're the one that hates to do it, but you're doing it because you're afraid God's going to put you in hell. And where's the love? How would you like to walk up and hear your wife say, you know, I do what my husband said. I do husband. I do try to work my wife. Because, man, I know if I don't, God's going to throw me in the hill. Man, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be here. Oh, who's going to love that person? Give me a hug and a kiss. What? Please. Get, get rid of this scoundrel. Because there's no love there. And God can hear that in, in our hearts when we say. And that's why we know sometimes people don't love. They're just going through the motions. Because there's only so much faking you can do. And so we don't want to be that way. Be sincere. Ask God to create in you a, a clean spirit, as David said. Renew you where you can be fresh again. And just like we see a new year came, there should be a new us every day we wake up to be refreshed by the Lord. So if you have need for prayer, don't hesitate. As plenty of us here, two or more is more than enough. Ask for prayer. Ask for strength. God will hear. Jesus went and took three men with him and said, pray with me. Three? He had nine others. Why not bring them all? This is a very part time life. He says, you three, come with me. Pray with me. Watch while I pray. You know, so the idea is that we have to understand God hears those who are sincere and he will hear us. Whatever you need, come now with the we stand and have his invitation. And tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me see on the portal he's waiting and watching watching for you and for 